Let us understand the advantages of full virtualization. This approach to virtualization means that applications run in a truly isolated guest OS, with one or more of these guest OS running simultaneously on the same hardware. Not only does this method support multiple OS, but it can also support dissimilar OS, differing in minor ways. For example, version and patch level, or in major ways. For example, completely different OS like Windows and Linux. The guest OS is not aware that it is virtualized and requires no modification. Full virtualization is the only option that requires no hardware assistance or operating system assistance to virtualize sensitive and privileged instructions. The hypervisor translates all operating system instructions on the fly and caches the results for future use, while user-level instructions can run unmodified at native speed. The VMM provides a standardized hardware environment that the guest OS resides on and interacts with, because the guest OS and the VMM form a consistent package. That package can be migrated from one machine to another, even though the physical machines the packages run upon may differ. Full virtualization offers the best isolation and security for virtual machines and simplifies migration and portability, as the same guest OS instance can run virtualized or on native hardware. Now let's discuss the limitations of full virtualization. The virtualization software hurts performance, which is to say that applications often run somewhat slower on virtualized systems than on unvirtualized systems. The hypervisor needs data processing, which means that a part of the computing power of a physical server and related resources. Should be reserved for the hypervisor program, while the VMMs appear to solve the entire problem with regard to virtualized machines. It does bring in some level of performance degradation. It is caused by the extra processing in terms of the instruction translation that the hypervisor has to do. This can have a negative impact on overall server performance. And slow down the applications. The hypervisor must contain the interfaces to the resources of the machine. These interfaces are referred to as device drivers. Since hardware emulation uses software to trick the guest OS into communicating with simulated non-existent hardware, this approach has created some driver compatibility problems. The issue is that the hypervisor contains the device drivers, and it might be difficult for new device drivers to be installed by users, unlike on a typical PC.